Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to animate different objects in After Effects using the channels found in sound files. So to get started we're going to open up After Effects and we're just going to click down into our comp area and create a new solid by going to layer, new, and then over to solid. Now once this box comes up you're just going to pick a random color. I'm choosing blue for my solid. Click OK. Then click on make comp size in order to make sure that we have a good size shape and then click OK. So I'm just going to take and scale this shape down so we have a nice blue square out on our stage. Now in order to actually animate this to sound, we're going to need to pull a sound file down into our comp area. So I have a file here called the Battleships, and this is a file from the Video Copilot Pro Score set. So really it doesn't matter, this had some pretty good drum beats, so it's going to actually show kind of what I'm talking about once you start to see the animation. So any sound file will do, just make sure you pull that down into your layers. Then what we're going to do is right click on that, go to keyframe assistant, and then convert audio to keyframes. So once I click that, we should see a new layer appear here. It kind of appears on stage as um, if you, you're familiar with null objects, kind of shows up as kind of an empty container. But inside of this um, audio amplitude layer that has been created, if you open that up, you'll see that you have a transform and an effects. And if you open up effects, you'll see you have left, right, and then both channels. Now, if you're not familiar with how audio works, basically, um, if you're listening to, say, a song on your iPod and you're listening through headphones, you know how they kind of have the headphones marked left and right? Well, that's for a reason, basically because you'll hear different sounds and different instruments and stuff um, on different sides depending on what the composer wanted you to hear. The same goes for movies. If you see an explosion in a movie and it happens towards the left side of the screen, then most um, video producers will actually have that sound come from the left side as well to kind of give you more realism. So you can tap in After Effects into either the left, right, or both channels combined. So what we're going to be doing today is basically we're going to take and open up this blue solid and we're going to open up transform and then we're going to kind of be taking and animating the scale based on the sound. So what I'm going to do is take and click alt click on the stopwatch next to scale and that's going to open up the expressions. If you saw my last um, 60 second tutorial I kind of started to talk about expressions in that. But what we're going to do is grab our little pick whip here. It's kind of this little um, curly circle and basically like a little spiral and we're going to take and you should when you're dragging and holding you should see this black line and we're going to go up and we actually need to open this up first we're going to open up both channels so that we can kind of tap into both of those at the same time so that you can see this slider uh, option right here so again we're going to grab our pick whip from the uh, scale of the blue solid and we're going to go up to slider and it'll kind of highlight over it and we're going to release. So now you won't see anything until you actually click somewhere else. Um, that's just how expressions work. So now what we're going to see is if we kind of like pan through, uh, scrub through our timeline here, what you're going to see is that it's actually animating our blue solid based on that sound. Now I actually have my sound unplugged. Now in order to preview sound in After Effects what you need to do is hit uh, the zero key on your number pad and you can see that it starts to kind of um, RAM preview that. So you can see that's kind of the music that I picked out and if you hit zero again which is what I did then it'll actually play. So let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys so that you can actually see what's happening here. So I'm just pressing zero to RAM preview and then I hit zero again and sound. So you can see that our shape is animating very nicely to that sound. So you can take and put this on any kind of parameter. So let's say that we just wanted to do the right channel. So what we can do is basically come down here to scale, delete our expression out and then just click off of it and it'll pretty much take it away. And we're going to take and just animate our expression to the right channel. So now, again, alt clicking on scale, grabbing our pick whip, and we'll come up to the right channel. Click off, and then we should be able to see that working as well. Now that's just going to be the sounds that you would hear out of the right um, side. So again, you can kind of take and get creative if we were to create maybe another square or something on the left side and the right side. We can kind of see how each channel actually um, works separately by seeing kind of the visuals of each one. Now, you don't have to just apply this to scale. You can take and even apply it to more than one at a time. Um, you can take and apply it on rotation. So we'll just go up here and we'll maybe we'll open up uh, maybe the both channels. 
grab our pick whip, select the slider for both channels, and then you can see that now it's also going to take and rotate, or at least it should be. <laughs> oh, I didn't grab the pick whip. We'll go back up here, grab the slider, make sure that, again, that your um, expression actually shows up. It should change from just like a couple of words to a whole bunch of words, so if it doesn't do that, then you've done something wrong. So now you can see that it's also rotating to the music as well as scaling. So you can get some pretty creative effects with this. Um, it definitely, it doesn't always work out perfectly. Like um, most times you want a kind of animated shape to maybe a specific instrument. So if you were to bring in, say, this is kind of a more complete um, piece of sound, um, like... I guess the, just a com more complete sound recording. So if I actually had each of these instruments split up so that I had the guitar and I had the drum um, separately, then it might work out a little bit better. So you're gonna wanna try and find things that you have the instruments split up on, um, but it definitely gives you a good starting point so you can kind of start to animate things. Now, I have seen this uh, technique used um, in different variations, not maybe with scale because sometimes that gets a little bit crazy and uncontrollable um, unless you're really good at writing expressions um, and customizing them. Um, so maybe you could use it to kind of maybe um, have the glow on this. We could put a glow on this and kind of pulse the intensity of the glow based on the music. There's a lot of different options. Um, this is kind of just scratching the surface so that you guys knew that this was here. So um, this is uh, just one of those things in After Effects that uh, is good to know about. Not always will you be using sound in this, um, but when you actually do bring sound in, you can do some pretty cool stuff. So hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. I have a new video coming out every week. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.